this 10 months have literally changed my, my life. To have a global network, especially in this last year. It's been an amazing 10 months. It was not a journey that only one person can walk, but uh, it had to take all of us together as a team. Like we've passed through seasons together. The feeling of belonging, particularly in a large group. I feel the connection and I feel the family. So I, I, my heart is just full of appreciation to each and every one of us. Welcome everyone, slowly, slowly, I see many of you joining us for the open community session that we are holding here today, tonight, um, hosted by NBC Rising together with John Kenyon. Our session today is called Across the Aisle and um, John will soon say more about what we're going to have in the next two hours. Um, my name is Goni. I'm part of the NVC Rising team. And together with me is Shahar, also from the team. And you can also see John. You will mainly hear him today. Um, Shahar is going to be here also as a, a organizer from NVC Rising and as our tech team tech support for today. Um, so I just want you to know that this session is recorded and uh, we do plan to share it with people who signed up but eventually did not show up. So um, it's if this is meaningful for you to know, I would like to acknowledge that. And um, I will say that it's also one of a series of uh, free events that we are hosting in the next few weeks at NVC Rising, so everyone can come. We have a few more to go, and we welcome you to join us also in the next events. And in the end of this uh, kind of six weeks from now, we are going to open our year program that is called the Learning Community. It's a 10-month program that we will uh, open for the third year already. John is also part of the um, training trainer team uh, that is going to be, and he's going to be teaching two sessions in, in the learning community. Um, maybe we, before we move forward, I will just welcome uh, some of you, all of you, to rename yourself with where you are from on the globe, if you would like that. This is just an invitation. I'm currently in Israel and Palestine. You can see it under my name or under my picture. Um, and uh, I would love to know where you're from. You can also write in the chat if you would like. Um, yeah, so I, We'll just mention before I move or I'll hand the mic to John that uh, uh, when this uh, session will complete in about two hours from now, I'm going to also stay around and give some information and answer questions about our learning community. And uh, if you will have any energy and if you are interested, I welcome you to stay and uh, hear a little bit more about it. Um thank you for writing in the chat where are you from? I'm very curious to know who who decided to join us today. Um, so um, across the aisle sessions uh, were held many times and offered by John, um, but it was always in my night time, I don't know, like 3 a.m. or something like this. And um, I was very, very curious to join them. And uh, as part of the collaboration with John and uh, our meeting, uh, we decided together to offer something in different, slightly different hours when I'm awake and another half of the planet is also <laughs> more awake. Um, 
and uh, and this brought us to this very moment where uh, John will be offering this uh, session. And, and John Kenyon is an NVC trainer who is specializing in mediation and reconciliation. And uh, John, I would like to thank you for for offering offering this open session. Um, and I want to hand the mic to you, and maybe you can say more about yourself and about what we are going to do in the next uh, mm. two hours. Thank you. Mm. Thank you, Goni. Ah, <clears throat> it's good to be with you all. Um, yeah, as Goni said, I've been um, been a trainer of the uh, nonviolent communication work for about 25 years and uh, work quite closely with Marshall Rosenberg, the creator founder of that for, for a number of years and um, specialized, have specialized since early on in, in mediation and, and, uh, and reconciliation so that the healing that can come from working with conflict and um, yeah, yeah, that's really, really important to me, that conflict isn't just about um, coming. Would you be willing to speak? <clears throat> Am I not speaking loud enough? Yeah, louder. Uh, louder. Yes. Okay. Uh, I wonder if my headset is, uh, it's probably better if I use this. <clears throat> is it? Uh, so if I speak like this, is that is that a good volume? Yeah. Yes. Okay. My Thank voice you. is just being soft. <laughs> I have a little bit of a cold that I'm just at the very end of. Um, but yeah, I've specialized in in you know nonviolent communication with mediation and particularly reconciliation. That's about healing healing the hurt and the pain that divides between us, and. Um, yeah, having that be a, a a process that that is healing. So that's um that's what I care a lot about um in doing in doing this work. And I've been doing this particular process of <clears throat> well, and and in terms of my approach, uh, call uh, mediate your life. So how to how to be the mediator of your whole life, any kind of conflict within yourself or between yourself and others, um to kind of relate to that from under knowing ourselves as this third side that can hold both sides empathically because i really believe that's that's the a pathway um you know when things seem impossible or intractable it's it's kind of finding that that part of us that can that is is like the consciousness that can hold the wholeness, the totality of things. And I like to think that that's in e in all of us, that capacity, if we want. And um, and then there are these different, for me, different roadmaps, different structures and processes to to help navigate different kinds of conflict that we're that we're in. <clears throat> what we're going to do today is a particular form of a group conversation particularly for differences to talk about as a group and and particularly political or social perspectives that that people want to share and I'll say a bit more uh, more about that in a moment um but also just want to say too if you want an easy way to access my work and and use it as a support for yourself or as a kind of follow up to this um just about my work in general there's a there's a mobile app I've created which is called Mediate Your Life app. So if you go to either app store and you just search Mediate Your Life, you'll find that. You can download it. It's free. And you can get access to a lot of my approach. <clears throat> so um, in terms of across the aisle, I've been doing this process for about three years, over three years now. <clears throat> on uh, As Goni said, Wednesday evenings on my Pacific time in California, which is where I, I live in Northern California. And a lot of people, yeah, in different parts of the world can't uh, can't make that time. And so I'm really glad we're doing it in this other time here. And I'll, I'll share with you in a moment, you know, what the process is. Um, 
it started as a collaboration between myself and a few other people. And then I kind of carried it on ever since for, for, yeah, I think over three years now, I pretty much every week um, and people coming from all over to, to, to be in these conversations uh, once a week. Um, but I also, I, I want to, uh, uh, of course, acknowledge, I mean, that the, the idea that um, for these gatherings is that, it's a chance for kind of any topic or issue to to come up. So uh, just whoever wants to speak could speak to a particular issue or topic, and and then we work um, with you know of the you know. So there's only time for so many people to speak. Maybe in two hours there'll be time for roughly ten people, maybe something like that. Depends, you know, somewhat how long uh, each person's turn goes and things like that. But um, they'll. Um, um, but then it's, it's a chance too, for people, everybody who's witnessing to get a lot out of that, that witnessing of what's being spoken to. So any, any issue, any topic can come up. <clears throat> and I, you know, I of course want to acknowledge what's happening in the world right now in the Middle East and that topic, uh, incredibly intense, emotional, and, um, uh, uh, as we all know, there's, um, so much conflict around it and and that but it, that is a that is a topic that can come here too and um if anybody wants to speak to that and sometimes this this space well so, sometimes the space is for really trying to practice understanding <clears throat> each other across our differences so this um i think of it as like this muscle of of understanding what we really disagree with and what somebody might be thinking or or, or what, however somebody's holding something and the practice of of trying to stay very connected to our own truth and and position about something or perspective and seeing if we can try to understand the other without agreeing or disagreeing so that's a that's a really to me a very powerful practice and not easy to do especially with more political social kind of things and maybe even more particularly what's happening right now and how intense the the emotion and the 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 sense of of, of pain of anguish and all kinds of, of of emotion around what's happening so um yeah but sometimes it it becomes almost like a grieving circle at times so it it's it can also be a space express a lot of grieving and we can witness and hold together whatever differences we might have in our perspectives there can be a shared human connection with grief and loss and suffering and pain and and um so that's also what can happen is is that feeling of just kind of holding those that grieving together as well so there's both sort of working with differences and trying to understand across differences and get to like what our commonality is underneath those differences but also sometimes just um really connecting and sharing together in the almost like the sense of collective grief even though we may be on have different very different perspectives on things just there's still we can feel that collective grief together so um I think maybe just having said that, I'd I'd just like to um, just drop into a little bit of meditative space, just to, just just kind of transition into. I'll share with you more specifically about the process and about um, there's these four four questions that I use. Maybe I'll do that first, and then I'll just invite us as a transition to maybe just kind of meditate together for a few moments, but. <clears throat> So, so the more specific process of this across the aisle is um, one person at a time gets a chance to speak. And the idea is everybody else is just listening. And I'd invite, try, again, trying to listen for understanding rather than agreeing or disagreeing. You're going to notice that, of course, come up in you. But then there's also the, can I, can I understand separate from agreeing or disagreeing? So one person at a time speaking. And then after that, about five minutes usually is what I find is is about right usually five minutes there's questions and i'll share those in a moment 
And then when that person is done, then, then I invite the next person that wants to speak. And I, I like inviting, or I invite, um, if you have a different perspective than the person who just spoke, it's a chance if you go next, because what I ask is to say back to the previous person what you heard. So really practicing out loud that understanding and reflecting back and hearing each other and being heard. And, and if you want to, to, again, to stretch in the practice is to, if someone has just spoken about something and you have different uh, belief, opinion, uh, understanding of things, if you wanted to go next and see if you can first, before you take a turn, reflect back what that person said until they feel understood, until they feel heard. So um, I think that can that can be powerful for people wanting to practice that. And it doesn't need to be that way. It could just be the next person that wants to speak. You reflect back what that person, previous person said, and then it's your turn to express and go through those questions. And that's, and we just keep going until maybe, um, yeah, maybe in, uh, until um, there's about half an hour left and then to start transitioning into just hearing from other voices, how this, how the process has been for you, what, what, you know, maybe what you learned or what you experienced or how, just how, how it was for you. So kind of a more group share hearing from other voices that didn't kind of take a turn in the regular process. So a chance to sort of debrief together as a group. And then my guess is maybe um, Goni and Shahar might want to, I think want to say some things towards the end as well. So when we get to that last half hour, starting to transition into those things. So, but um, until then we have um, about, an hour and a half or so. Is that right? Nine, 15, 10, 15. Hour and 15 minutes or so, maybe a little more. Okay, let me share the questions with you. I had a, um, a slide I used to use for these questions and I can't find it. So I'm just putting it in the chat. So just have a look in the chat. The four questions and they they roughly um parallel the four components of nonviolent communication but the little different and they're in, um in a question form and i find that something about being in a question form really helps in this process and as you're speaking whoever's speaking just sort of using the questions as a way to just see if you're touching in these different I think of these different levels or layers of our of our human experience to be sharing about and to be hearing each other around. So the first is what what is the issue or topic you want to speak about? <clears throat> and I found that it helps to narrow it down. Sometimes people want to talk about all kinds of like interrelated things. And I find it's helpful to kind of pick a, a more narrow topic if you can. And then second question, what meaning do you give to it? What beliefs? So I actually have found that sometimes in nonviolent communication, it's like, well, let's not focus too much on the thoughts and the beliefs, let's get right to feelings and needs. But I actually feel, find that it's important to, to kind of understand each other, to, to know what the beliefs, the stories, the perspective is that we're each holding and trying to see if we can understand that in each other. So that's the second question, kind of what is the, what's the meaning you're giving to a situation? What are you thinking about it? What are your beliefs? What kind of meaning are you creating around it? But the idea we can observe that almost, we can speak it as the observation of our experience, our sort of reality or truth or how it is for us. And there's a way we can express that as what's ours versus the truth. Yeah. So there's a practice in expressing fully kind of how we see things, but in a way that can leave space for other possibilities also, and how other people can think and see and understand what's going on. So that's the second question. Third question, what emotions are you feeling? So kind of going from a more um, cognitive space of understanding down into the body, down into feelings, emotions. So if you're speaking, what emotions are you feeling as you're talking about this topic? And then fourth question, what do you want? So it's Kind of a wide open 
what what is it what's important to you what are you wanting in relation to this situation and it could be more personally and specifically you know things you want and it could be just more universal like the needs that we what we want we want needs maybe love and peace and safety and you know so speaking to what you want at different levels of 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 that yeah so those are the four questions and that's it so um if it's not totally clear yet, it will be once we get started, you'll see very quickly how it how it goes. So I just uh, even if you have a few questions, let's just see if getting into the process answers them for you. And if not, you can always you can always ask. And you can put things in the chat. I won't see them, but I think Boni and Sahar are following the chat some. And um, um, yeah, all right. So as we uh, Maybe to, to transition into doing the process and just maybe invite bringing attention to your breath, perhaps. <clears throat> maybe just feeling into your body right now. How are you? How are you doing in your body? the places that you're feeling different sensations and maybe places you're not. Maybe there's some places where there's some numbness or not sure how you're feeling. In other ways, maybe things you can feel in your body. So maybe just noticing whatever you can feel, whatever you connect to in your body. feeling your breath move in the body. And then bringing to mind perhaps, or just my invitation to just check with yourself, what is there for you right now? Whether you speak to it or not today in the in the process, what is what's feeling most important to you about what's happening in the world right now and how you're thinking and feeling about it? I mean, just noticing just what what are the thoughts that have come to you? You know, what are the images and the words in your mind and things you might want to express and talk about during this time? Mm. And this is something I'd invite you all to keep. You many of you probably have a self-connection or self-empathy practice. But it's a really powerful chance the whole time to be periodically doing that as you're listening to different people speak or in the pauses between just that continuing to come back to your own self-connection and kind of how you're noticing what you're thinking and what you're feeling in your body and what you're wanting and the needs that are there for you just to kind of keep both staying connected to yourself that way and being present, coming back to being present with whoever's speaking and what they're sharing. Okay, so um, ready? Let's let's get started um, with who, let's see how many of us are there. 91 people, yeah. So if you want to um, <clears throat> raise your virtual hand, because there's a few screens, I won't see the other screen. So you need to put up with the uh, at the bottom of the screen, the reactions button and a raise hand. And I see Vicky, okay. And if more than one person puts their hand up, we can just keep track of that by just people's you know hands at the top of the screen. And, um, and again, there, there's only so much time for so many people, but we'll, you know, 
we'll do what we can with the time that we have. <clears throat> All right, so Vicky, I'd like to uh, bring you into the spotlight with me so it's easier for people to just kind of focus. Is that okay, Vicky? Sure. We do that? All right, so you and then me. Okay, right. yeah, yeah. So let me, I'll just put the <clears throat> questions in again. I can see them. And um, so, yeah, the first Ready? question. Yeah, what, what topic or issue do you want to you want to speak My to? issue is public education. Um, I am a retired teacher and I'm on the school board right now. So I've been a lifelong educator. Um, so the struggle right now is the bureaucratic takeover of our schools and my belief in um, wanting to create schools that are more authentic for kids and teachers. So that's where our conflict comes up, um, particularly on the school board. Um, and the meaning that I give it, um, you know, I really see that uh, put a lot of thought into this. I understand the whole culture of supremacy that we're in, patriarchy, those kind of conditions that created this where publishing companies tell teachers what to do, teachers tell students what to do, and they don't honor the authentic selves in the system. Um, so that's the meaning that I give to it right now. And for me, the meaning I give from myself and the emotion that comes up is that I was not accepted in school. I struggled because I'm very, what they call hyper now. I was I diagnosed as an adult, um, but it was very hard for me to sit down, be quiet and do what you're told, especially if I didn't agree with what I was being told. So I know that those emotions come from that place of, I was wronged. I don't want kids in schools to be wronged anymore. So I'm fighting the good fight kind of thing. And I'm trying to let that go. Um, cause what I really want is for personally, for me to be more accepting of myself and my differences and that I want to quit fighting the system and finding ways to work with it. Mm -hmm. Did I kind of do what you asked so far? Yes, very much so. And then that, the third question about your emotions, uh, any anything more you want to say about as you speak to this topic right now? How do you how do you feel? What kind of what kind of emotions? I still you... feel angry, and I get this real tight ball right at the bottom of my sternum, yeah. like I'm eating something that won't go down. Um, it just feels stuck there. Um, and Wednesday night at the school board meeting, I felt angry. I felt very mm. angry. Um, and so this whole turmoil was going on inside me of what to do with that anger and how to use it constructively. So I ended up yeah. not saying anything, which was extremely uncharacteristic for me. Okay. And then this was in what you shared some, but it kind of helps often to kind of settle, really summarize or um, really say it in a, in a, in a way at the end of what you want, kind of what, what you're, longing for dreaming of hoping for specifically uh -huh. or more generally and universally what 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 are you wanting here? oh again it's the self-acceptance and it's also the uh, you know what this country was supposed to be founded on that you know the equality and uh, liberty justice for all because i mm -hmm. work with a lot of different kids and they're not being accepted for who they are so and we see that play out in world issues right now that just break my heart um, because there's so much hate and and I can see it starting in the schools with the bullying and you know when we don't accept each other for who we are it, it just reverberates all over the globe okay. okay do you feel complete for the moment and I do want to share thank you okay yeah so I like to leave just a moment of silence around e what each person shares. So let's let's do that for a moment with what you just shared. OK. 
Okay, thank you. So I'm gonna go back to <clears throat> and Sarah. Sarah, would you, you've got your hand up. Um, do you want to go next? You could also, um, you know, wait too, if you feel like this moment isn't the right timing for you, but but you're you put your hand up. So would you like to go next? And and be willing to first reflect back what Vicky said about her, what she shared, and then your turn to to go where you want to go. Yes, thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. So if you're up for that, then I'll put you also in the spotlight. That's all right. And I'll actually take myself back up to the uh, the upper corner here. <clears throat> and so Sarah, if you and it's not about uh, needing to get it right. Uh, it's more just the intention to say whatever you remember, whatever you heard. And then <clears throat> Vicky can clarify. She can, you know, uh, say more. But it's just, yeah, you're just whatever you heard. And the it's more about the intention to try to connect with with what Vicky, her experience and perspective and, and, and what she said about the questions. So whatever you remember, um, Sarah. And it's fine if you don't get it right, because Vicki can clarify. Thank you. Hi, Vicki. Nice to meet you. Hi. Um, I'll do the best I can. I just have to qualify. Um, I have some short-term memory issues. So this is you know, a practice, a good practice for me. I purposely didn't write anything down because I'm trying to train my memory. So okay. um, from from what I heard, you're um, a longtime teacher, and you're really dedicated and passionate about what you do, and you have a, um, a concern with the administration, people are governing the school bodies, and feel that there's a loss of quality in the um, in the schools, a loss of um, authenticity and care for the um, the student. And, and the teachers and um, and you're really wanting to um, bring the authenticity into the classroom, into the um, discussions and um, have students be treated with, um, you know, and be able to feel that they're being heard and seen for, for their, um, their differences, which are really important, and um, and their uniqueness, and um, you're you're really passionate. You still carry some anger um, around it. You have a personal story of um, not being heard, and in you know when you were in school yourself, and you really want to make a difference for these children and teachers at this time. It's really difficult at this time for you. Mm, okay, thank you, Sarah. Let's check with Vicky. Vicky has yeah, thank you, Sarah. I still up. heard. Yeah, okay. Anything else you wanted to to highlight or 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 kind of underscore or clarify, or you feel like that that really did it? She she really got it. I think she got it. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Welcome. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Vicky, and thank you, Sarah. So I'm gonna come back and join you. Sarah in the spotlight. Yeah. So just take another moment. So what is the uh <clears throat> what's the topic or issue for you? Could be the same one, and sometimes it's building on certain topics, and other times it's going in a different one choosing a different topic. So what would you like to do, Sarah, for, for a topic? Well, I'd like to talk about um, the role of a mediator um, compared to a facilitator. Um, I'm coming from a place of um, being in a, um, a community, um, a religious community and actually Jewish community. Um, and I'm uh, fairly new to the community. I've just been there for a year and a half or so. 
and I joined a um, Healing the World Committee. Um, and on this committee, um, we're doing social justice and environmental justice actions and trying to share that with the community and get people involved. And one of the, one of the issues and topics that came up is the discussion around Israel. And that has been a big conflict. And the council of the community has said that we can't really discuss it. And um, we're trying to find um, ways to discuss it. And I found out that a whole group of very um, people with different beliefs, maybe more conservative beliefs, left you know, earlier on before I arrived when the topic came up and people had such differences, they didn't feel included. And I think that the council is afraid that that's going to happen again. And um, we're on the, on the committee. We want to talk about it, but not in a way that would isolate people. So we've talked about bringing in a facilitator or something like that to help with the discussion, but it keeps getting off the table and it's not happening. So um, my I'd, I'd like to get some more understanding around it. I'd like to maybe, you know, get some mediation skills so I can, you know, understand how, what type of facilitation might be needed or maybe bring in a mediator, bring, maybe, um, maybe it's a facilitator that's needed. Um, but I feel like mediation could help me in anything I'm doing. Um, and um, I'm feeling really um, sad and concerned um, because right now the issue has gotten bigger um, and people are talking about it and other people are saying this doesn't reflect what the board of, of everyone's views in the congregation <laughs> uh, when if the rabbi mentions Palestine you know as you know along with Israel um, that that announcement comes up in the newsletter um, and so just to try and keep the peace um, and people are, some people are very upset that, that um, the rabbi spoke out. And so it's, for me, I'm very sensitive and I hear and, and I'm, I am, have a very wide perspective on it. And I really want peace and I want, I don't want weapons and war and I want communication. And, um, and some people are like pro-war and, um, you know, only see, you know, maybe the, the very political leader side of it, and other people have way wider points of view all, all through the spectrum. And so I'm, I'm, my, what do I want? I want to be able to talk about it. And, um, and I want to be able to do it in a way that people don't feel hurt, that they do feel heard, and, and that we can come to some kind of, not, not necessarily, we don't have to agree on everything, but we can we can accept that there are many different opinions out there and see how we as a group can support um, life that life is precious that's my you know for me um, and um, the pain that people have you know the mourning around what's going on and the fears and and so on and so forth mm, mm, yeah. Okay. I think you I think you covered all those <clears throat> all those questions. Um you you did say this, but I just um noticed myself wanting to I find the the emotion so connecting. Just a, a little bit more just the feelings that are there as you name these different needs and what you're really hoping for and wanting. What are the feelings? Just say again the emotions for you. Um, well, I, I've, I'm afraid, you know, for, to, for, for the whole country, you know, to, you know, to see the destruction of democracy and lives and people. So I'm afraid, um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm also hopeful that, um, that there will be a solution. I, I have faith, um, just my own personal faith that, um, if I don't stay in a place of fear, um, that there will be possibilities, and I want to bring that to the community, and but also back it with what possibilities there are, um, and um, 
I also have um, a lot of tenderness um, and um, compassion for the differences in, in people's um, um, upbringing, which, which, um, and experiences, which might bring them to be on opposite sides. And I, um, it's painful for me to, um, to hear and see people refusing to talk to each other or putting down other people for their opinions. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Thank you so much, Sarah. Well, let's take a moment of, of silence to be with what you shared. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I am gonna go and look. I looks like another hand is up. <clears throat> Rasha, would you like to go next? Yes, oh. thank you. Yes. Okay. And does it work for you to be on video? Because if you aren't, I can't bring you into the spotlight, which is okay. We can work with that if you'd rather keep your camera off. Um, if it's okay, I prefer to keep my camera off. I don't feel comfortable turning turning it on. Sure. On right now. Can you can you put your put the virtual hand back up because that'll bring you Again? to the to the, yeah okay. that'll bring sure. you to the top screen like that. And then what I think I'll, I'll okay. ask Sarah if you would also put your I'm going to remove the spotlights and Sarah if you would put your virtual hand up. Both of you would sort of keep your virtual hands up. That'll just bring you both to the to the top okay. part of the screen there. <clears throat> and yeah, so Rasha, would you be willing to um, first start with saying back to Sarah what you heard? And just to, rem I like to keep reminding that it's, it's not about agreeing with anything or disagreeing. Yes. It's just about what, what you heard and, what Sarah would help Sarah feel understood mm -hmm. and on these different levels that the, that, that, that those questions point to. So, and again, you don't need to get it right or do it well or anything like that. Just your intention to try to understand. Yeah? Okay. First, thank you for accommodating my wish to stay uh, off video. Um, so I heard Sarah, Sarah talking about the conflict that is going on around the world now. Uh, which is also a sensitive subject to me. That's why I decided to speak. So thank you, Sarah. Um, she was telling us about the community that she belongs to and her wish that this subject is touched in the community, her concerns about the people feel, feeling um, uh, 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 not included in the subject and uh, not willing or wishing to talk about it. Um, and that, she wants peace and she wants everybody to be included in this conversation. Um, she does not want weapons. And uh, to a certain level, I heard her uh, wish to, to uh, be safe and uh, understood and heard and uh, um, to, to feel, uh, the sense, to have the sense of, the, of belonging to her community as well. Mm, mm. Yeah, thanks. And, and anything else about her her emotions that she feels about this? Uh, she's sad, um, concerned. I don't know. To a certain point, I heard um, some anger because of, of uh, how some people reacted to, to the situation. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Let's check. Let's check with Sarah. So Sarah, how how's that landing? And again, you get it's totally fine to clarify if something wasn't quite right, or you want to highlight something and kind of reinforce it in some way. So, yeah, how is that? Yeah, thank you, Rasha, for reflecting that. I think you really got most of it, and I appreciate that. And I think you might have even read some of my inner um, feelings or or um, um, my needs that were 
you know, that maybe I didn't mention in a word. So, but maybe, maybe you heard them through what I said. So I appreciate that. Um, I guess the one thing I would highlight is um, I'm, I'm trying to stay in a peaceful and not angry way when I'm with my community. And mm -hmm. even if I have strong feelings, um, I, I want to be authentic about them, but not make other people feel uncomfortable to participate in discussion. So mm -hmm. if there were any anger or anything like that, I wouldn't be bringing it to, um, I wouldn't want to be bringing that to the communication. So maybe Rasha, if you'd like just reflecting that piece back a little bit, just what you heard there. Yes, thank you for sharing that. Um, so oh, I hear that you don't want to take some of, or you, you don't want to take the anger or the strong feelings to the conversations or to your community. Um, and um, I was wondering about the tools or the techniques you might be using to do that, because this is one of the things that I have been reflecting on as well. So, oh, um, yeah, that might get a little more into, um, well, how about let's first just make sure you, you get heard for what you have said already, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so Rush, Russia, just reflecting back, um, this, this other piece. And I heard there too, also Sarah, like the, um, wanting, wanting there to be wanting to be authentic and say what's actually there for you but in a way that makes also leave space for others who have different opinions and <clears throat> and uh, so there can be a real a real a good conversation around these diff very difficult topics so yeah. is that the essence of it is anything else you want to um yeah just say that i i want all those emotions to be expressed but not directed at somebody else so okay. if I uh -huh. come and say I'm angry about this, I'm not going to say you make me angry. I'm angry at you because you're, you know, I, I want to keep my, my feelings on my, to like, I want these, I'm owning these, these are my feelings and other people can have different feelings, but I don't want to, um, to be angry at another person because they have a different feeling than myself. Mm -hmm. To be responsible for your own feelings. Okay. All right. Um, and then you had a question, Rasha, of Sarah about certain kind of specific um, things. Do we could we could check in with Sarah about that. Um, and for me, that 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 kind of this is the main part of the process, just to sort of speak to these things. You reflected back, and Sarah. Till Sarah feels feels heard. So, is there still something you'd want to hear from Sarah more, Rasha? Um, she thought of, uh, sort of, um, told us about how she, uh, she is um, trying to deal with this anger in a way that is not directed towards people to take responsibility about her own feelings, which is, mm -hmm. I think, the answer to my question. But if she, okay, would, yeah, okay, if that feels like that got to your question then um, mm -hmm. let's just see Sarah do you feel feel complete for the moment here yes I do thank you Raja yeah thank you thank Raja. You. okay um so now it is your turn um maybe just pause for a moment just to be kind of fully shifting over to you And actually, maybe here I like I like to periodically keep reminding everybody who's who's listening to to be noticing what's coming up in you, agreement, disagreement, different kinds of other thoughts, what's happening in your in your bodies, what are you feeling as different things are being spoken about. So it's this kind of meditation practice in a way of of with being present with yourself. And what's and then what needs or what's important to you that you can get in touch with through through that, um, like what you care about, the needs that really matter to you. Yeah. 
and maybe noticing where it's hard. It's hard to hear somebody. It's hard to empathize. It's hard to understand. Maybe where those blocks come up in us and that that's okay too. That's, that's just so natural. It's so part of being human is places we, the parts of us that protect us, yeah, by maybe making it more difficult sometimes to, to, um, to hear certain things, right? And certain needs in us that are so strong that are making that difficult. So, and then noticing all of that. Okay, so Rasha, uh, I'll just put the I'll put the question. Keep putting the questions in in case anybody else is coming in a little later <clears throat> to the group. So, what's the topic or issue? You could stay on this one that that uh, Sarah brought, or you could um, um, pick a Actually, different. Actually, it's yeah, it's related, and that's why I decided to raise my hand. Okay, great. Um. It's also about the subject of willingness to speak about it or to be included or uh, not included in the conversation. It's a huge conflict that is affecting the world, not just the, the area. Uh, just to be clear, I am originally from Syria and I'm living now in Canada, but I still have family and friends all over the region in Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, and I feel really concerned and scared for them because this conflict can expand to the entire region and Syria is already struggling with lots of issues that this conflict would be an added burden and maybe uh, an additional horror to what the Syrians are living throughout their day. Um, so what I'm sad and angry about, and that's why I asked Sarah how she's going to deal with her anger, is the inequality and injustice when it comes to talking about the subject and bringing up the news. Um, I, I'm hoping for peace. I'm hoping that the humanity in total flourish and live together in harmony. And um, what I'm seeing now is a power imbalance when talking about the subject. There are civilians for from both sides, innocent people who does not deserve to face all of that. And the fact that some people who are in power are not willing to acknowledge the presence of the other part or the other um, side of, of the equation, which is the Palestinians, makes me really, really sad. Uh, when you talk about the news, uh, um, when you open the uh, Western news, there is no mentioning for those civilians uh, in Gaza or the West Bank and what is going to ha what is happening to them. Uh, all we are focusing about is the negative side, which is the terrorist acts and the terrorism and everything related to negative words. And uh, no one is saying, whoa, let's take a step back and talk about calming things down. Everybody is, we are willing to support this side. Everybody is, we are willing to support the other side. We will send weapons. We will send finances to and to militarize actions. And no one is saying, let's pose and, and invite people to, to talk about it in a different way. And uh, um, so I think I covered everything you, you asked for. Um, yeah, yeah. So you did speak to what you what you see from your yes. perspective and some of how you're understanding things in terms of power imbalance and what gets focused on and talked about and those kind of things. And you did mention some of your feelings. You want to say anything more about just emotionally how you are with with this as you as you speak about it right now? Yes, um, I'm sad, scared. Um not comfortable uh, I, like i do trust that this is a safe community but also um to a certain point because of the sensitivity of the subject uh, where i come from um i have concerns that i might be uh judged maybe i don't know but i i 
I'm taking responsibility for my feelings and everything. And uh, I, I appreciate that you are hearing me. So, mm. well, I appreciate the courageousness of, of you and, and everybody who's speaking and when, when they feel some fear about it. Um, and then in terms of what you want, this was, this was, again, it was in what you said already, but it sometimes helps to really just now that you said how you feel and some of, you know, some of the way you're thinking about it now, really just zeroing in on just what you're yes. most wanting, what you're most, um, the needs that you're most in touch with mm -hmm. here, what mm -hmm. you really want to see happening. I want to, to know that my family back there will be safe and uh, uh, also other civilians over there are safe because all those scenes that we're seeing the horror that we're seeing is is really uh, hurting me and I'm so sad that we are in 2023 we went through already through major wars in our history as humanity and still we did we, we did we're not learning from this Mm. Mm. yeah yeah so then that there's maybe just take that a little further then you we use the, the thought not learning from this and the, all this this different wars still happening and what you want what you want uh peace for sure peace uh, mm. maybe some rational people in the decision making positions to call mm -hmm. for some brain talk instead of war talk okay yeah okay do you feel complete for the moment in what you wanted yes. to say yes thank you all right let's again take a moment to be in silence with what you've shared so we can connect that way as a group with what you've shared and, and others. Okay. <clears throat> oh, and um, would you um, keep your hand yes. up actually? For the next person. Yes. Russia, yeah, so that, that yeah, because we just wanna now make sure you feel heard and understood mm -hmm. for what you said and just to, and uh, see if Shoshi, you're, you're next. Would you like to go next? You can always kind of pass and, um, but if but, now, does this feel like a good moment for you to go next? Yeah, yeah, it does. Thank you. Can okay. You yeah. yeah. So again, in the reflect, not just for you, just keep reminding the group that the reflecting back is is not agreement. It's just about what you hear and and helping the person feel really heard and understood, and that connection to these different parts of what's going on for them. So if you're open to that, Shoshi, what what have you heard from Russia? Um, yeah, Russia, I'm hearing uh, just a really deep longing for peace and security and almost just like a way out of what's been happening. I'm hearing this like, not even frustration, but like this despair almost that we keep bumping up against the same problems again and again. And when do people get to be safe and just live? Um, and um, I think maybe the, there's something about the media, which can the media can just be so triggering for people I think that maybe um yeah you're hearing it's not it's, it's not meeting you where you where you are and it's not really speaking your truth the way that you'd like it to be spoken it's like someone else's idea of the truth that you just wish you could almost argue back and be like hey that's not true at all but you can't because it's the media and it gets to say whatever it wants um I don't know did, did I hear you Um, that part lands so far, Russia. Yes, I think uh, Shoshi get, got most, more, most of what, what I want to say. It's just, um, I want to clarify one thing. Even the social media is denying the other side to say anything. I've seen lots of people who got 
restricted from their profiles just for putting some pictures or putting some posts. So thank you for, for mentioning that. Yes. So this let's let's stay with this. Um the the kind of the perspectives, the 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 meaning, the the beliefs, the understandings that we, we might have differences around. Sometimes we shot <clears throat> we move away from that because they're different and there's good reason because sometimes that creates lots of conflict and tension but in this space i want to invite just the practice of seeing if we can be with any any you know various beliefs various perspectives so if if shoshi you're willing to sort of stay with what you're hearing from russia in terms of what i heard something about like this imbalance mm. that she and power and what gets reported on and those kind of things, just, again, you're not agreeing or disagreeing with anything. You're just kind of saying what you heard Rasha's experience to be that she's that she's perceiving there. Oh, yeah. So, sorry if it sounded like I was agreeing or disagreeing. I, I wasn't. No, it didn't. Sense. It didn't. I'm just trying to keep emphasizing. Oh, that. okay. <laughs> yeah, no, um, I, okay. I didn't feel that. Okay. Um, yeah. So there's a, yeah. So there's, you're, you're, the way you're experiencing it, there's maybe a power imbalance in the media that one side gets to share their truth more than the other, but then also that power imbalance also exists on the on the social media and what your your experience of who gets their account banned because what they're saying is too like um it's not allowed basically, like and that some story, some versions of the story are allowed more than others. And maybe does that feed into that? that feeling of despair that, that nothing can ever change if, mm -hmm. if that, that dream carries on. Is it something like that? Yes, to uh, a certain point. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So anything you want to clarify more there uh, or, or say kind of um, highlight for yourself, Rasha? Um, no, that pretty much it. Thank you. Yeah, and maybe I'll just just ask. Uh, sometimes this can be a little repetitive, but I find it it just helps kind of keep deepening into each other's experience. So maybe Shoshi, you talk. You you mentioned the despair. Any other emotions that you that you heard or kind of guessing at and various other feelings? Um, I think I, I maybe I'm hearing some despair, but also like it's a it's just such a deep longing. It's almost like even if you can't express it in words, like you know what peace looks like to you and what safety looks like to you and you just you just want that so deeply like you can't mm -hmm. like almost can't see anything else is it like that maybe yes thank you and also love I guess love plays a big part in this so talking about your family and you know family is something that's so important to, to like probably most of us like yeah that that love conquers everything right mm-hmm Mm -hmm. So the people you in your family or people you personally know, and then others that you're aware of. Um, yeah. So uh, Rasha, now, uh, how are you at this moment in terms of feeling understood? Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. And then now, if you want, you can uh, put your hand down. Perfect. Okay, Shoshi. So it's okay if, uh, since you're on camera, can I put us both in the spotlight to make it easier for everybody to see? Yes. I'm not promising to know how to take my hand down right away. I will figure that out. Oh, after. that is okay. <laughs> you can keep it up if you want. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So thank you for reflecting back what you heard. And um, yeah, so for you, same topic or different topic yeah same topic I, I wanted the chance I think to maybe bring my voice into that topic as well I know that the the well both media representation and the imbalance of bias when it comes to this is so emotive and actually yeah when Russia started to talk about the bias I just I really felt my heart start beating faster because I didn't actually know which side Russia would say the bias is in favor of and I just thought whichever side it is it's going to be so emotional because I hear so many people feeling that the bias is against them and it's so painful for people um 
my personal experience with media bias and social media bias is well there's um a, a surprise actually sorry there's a, there's a lot that comes up so I'm like I'm not quite sure where to start but um yeah I was surprised to hear that like the numbers of Palestinian civilians don't get reported and that that's from Russia's experience and like to me that that's really the opposite because like yeah what I do here on the BBC every time is that they report the number of Israeli civilian deaths and then the number of Palestinian civilian deaths and like both numbers are just horrible and unthinkable every time but like from from my in my community what people will tend to criticize in terms of bias is that the BBC that doesn't then say like okay uh, uh, I feel horrible saying it because I know this is going to bring up a lot of people but I just want to repeat what I generally hear which is that the numbers of civilian deaths on the Palestinian side are normally a lot higher because the Israeli government and defense force does a better job of protecting its civilians whereas the like Hamas and those groups would put their civilians in harm's way on purpose because that's their agenda I, I feel horrible saying that in front of 91 people I know that's so, that's so emotive and brings up so much but that's been my experience of media bias is that that for, from our point of view as like as Jewish people living in the UK we have to deal with the fallout of whatever the BBC decides to say about Israel um that yeah that that, that side of it gets to it it's not just that like okay I hear this narrative that Israel likes killing civilians <laughs> that's what that's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to say and then as a Jewish person here in the UK I have to deal with the fallout of the BBC saying that Israel likes killing civilians whereas for me that's that's not true that's not what's happening um and then on social media as well like I see page after page of people saying like yeah like using all these terms to describe Israel and that it's a terrorist state or that it's a apartheid and all these things and like and every time there's this kind of conflict like as Jewish people we face so much more dangerous situations walking down the street and last time in 2021 and there was escalation and a group of like yeah a group of guys came from Bradford to Golders Green which most people probably don't realize is, uh, but, but don't know the geography is like a fairly long way to come just to drive around a very Jewish neighborhood and say F the Jews and make death threats and rape threats and things like that. And like, we had to deal with that because of what had been in the media and my non-Jewish friends on Twitter and everything that like, they didn't say anything about that. Like they were just, they, they didn't, they didn't seem to care that this is what I was having to deal with as, as their friend. Um, they wanted to repeat like how bad Israel was because of what they've been hearing on the BBC um, and other news outlets in the UK so my experience of media bias and power imbalance has been like that but I recognize that it is really emotive as well and it, it is one where everyone has such strong feelings about it that they like it just always seems like the media is against you and is pushing a narrative that does in a very real way lead to more harm for your people and it's so it's so sad I'm finding it so emotional sorry and I'm really scared I'm going to say something that upsets people even more but I think it is inevitable and we are all here to listen to each other as well um so can I, I can invite you just to to go just a little bit slower in this moment I, I'm so just moved that the courage to speak to your experience and how you're sharing it as your experience and and what you hear and see and 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 then the fear of how you might be received for that so maybe just um just take a few breaths with what you've said so far and yeah yeah and just any other any other emotions like if you drop into your body a little just any anything else there's the fear and about speaking to this and any and a lot of right, what you just said, so much emotion for you and others in, in this. So is there any, any other emotions you want to speak to that are going on for you? I'm surprised to find that I can barely speak about this without crying. It's like, oh, okay, this is a lot of emotion. Um, and yeah, um, but really there's such a, there's a really deep aloneness for me because like, yeah, like I, 
like yeah I do have friends from all different religions and backgrounds and like I find that as like a really big privilege and like I I enjoy that until something like this happens and um just realizing that yeah like that anti-semitic attacks in the UK can increase by 500 percent and my non-Jewish friends don't say anything and will carry on pushing this narrative on social media that actually that actually feeds those incidents yeah feeds into those incidents and there's yeah there's a, a really deep aloneness around that um and I think I it does it does get into my head I have a like I have a lot of fear of course like I don't want it to sound like I don't have fear for the people on the ground like the the civilians as like as everybody's mentioned I think it is really right and important that like we keep all the civilians at the at the forefront but also like yeah I do end up finding myself having this fear that like if all my friends are saying this maybe like maybe they are right like yeah is it possible that I'm missing something and actually like I do support something terrible just because like I don't want like Israel to get completely destroyed by like by rockets and stuff like yeah and I do want Israel to exist like and then god I'm shaking thinking about it I'm just mm -hmm. like oh do it like yeah is it actually true that I support something terrible and I, I, I get I get really I get really confused and and afraid of myself I think hmm. um yeah so let's just 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 taking that yeah so that <clears throat> different different thoughts you're having on 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 this and hmm. there's confusion a lot of fear a lot of sadness and aloneness yeah uh, that you're speaking to yeah yeah a lot of pain just pain yeah yeah, it is such a painful situation, and like, yeah, I really want to recognize like everybody's pain, and especially the people on the ground, like what I'm dealing with on social media, and people shouting stuff at me in the street, and like, yeah, and knowing that those incidents have increased five hundred percent, it's a lot, but it's still not as much as the people that are getting bombed right now, uh, and yeah, and getting bombed and shot at, and all those things, and like, I do want to keep those people at the forefront, but yeah there is still a lot that comes up for me as well, just even as someone who is tangentially affected by all of this. Mm, yeah. Okay. Thank you. So now that, that fourth question, <clears throat> you, I think it's in what you've been saying, but it often helps to, again, sort of just really focus in on that towards the end of what you want, kind of the vision, the dream, what's so important to you, the needs that you're most wanting to see met here, like that, like, Anything specific you want? Yeah, I want like 90% of the conversations on this topic to be like this, I think. Like right now, I'd be surprised if it was even 1% that the conversations would be that people come and are willing to listen and hear and hold the emotions. And like everybody here so far has said that like what they're really yearning for is peace and like and safety, among other things. And I think that that's really true. Like that is what almost every maybe some people have other motivations but like money and so on but I think for for the most part like that that is really true that what almost everyone really wants is peace and safety for their family and yeah I really wish all the conversations could be um done in a way that enables us to realize that whereas like yeah on social media and in the mainstream media it's just all about trying to decide who's a terrorist and who's a colonialist and who's this and that and um, and it it doesn't it doesn't facilitate that there's no space to facilitate listening and I, I think that's that's so much at the the root of why we don't get peace for the civilians on the ground and also why everyone who is tangentially affected by it has to suffer as well mm. Mm. okay thank you thank you for sharing all that do you feel complete for the moment there's there's some so much there right to share but do you, for this moment do you feel complete yeah i think so thank you okay how about we take a moment of silence to be with what you've shared if that's all right Okay, thank you again. <clears throat> so 
sometimes I, I, I'm, I, I get torn at moments like this because I want to hear from as many people as possible. And there's often something kind of nice about a little bit of back and forth between two people who have spoken to different aspects of, of, of a situation. So what I'd like to do, Shoshi, is ask Rasha if she'd like to just kind of come back in to reflect back what you've heard and if there's anything she wants to say and then go to another person. Um, would that be okay with you? I don't know if she wants to do that. She might not want to do that, but would that be all right with you? I'd like that if, if Rasha- You'd like that? Me. Okay. Yeah, I'm so, here. Rasha, are you up for are you up for doing that? Yes, sure. Um, I can I can uh, hear and sense Shoshi's emotions and scare. She is also longing for security and safety. From what I'm heard, I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. uh, to be honest, I didn't hear the side of the news in BBC. The ones that they are mentioning that Israel is is better protecting their civilians. Uh, because from what I watched on the news, and then I stopped watching, to be honest, because I was so uh, triggered, uh, is that... Well, and it's, what, but in terms of what you heard Shoshi saying, yeah, there's also there's what oh, you've okay, been okay. experiencing, right? And what you've been seeing on the news or not seeing or not hearing. Um, <clears throat> and there's just what you heard from from Shoshi. And if, yes. if you're willing to kind of just stay with, and you know, again, you might not have, you might not remember a lot of the things there's a lot she shared but um yeah anything else you you heard about how she's experiencing things how she's feeling the 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 what she wants and needs anything else about that um i don't know if i heard uh right but what i heard is the longing of being acknowledged as a jewish in in uh you live in the uk i guess uh this is what i heard and you're looking for or you're longing for safety and security as well, and that you were affected by the situation, even though you live far away, but just because you are uh, from a Jewish background, you are witnessing also some terrifying accidents or, or listening to some comments uh, that are related to the subject that does not resonate with what I said, but a totally different, the opposite side of the experience. And uh, you feel sad and... Uh, scared because of those incidents and uh, uh, this is to some extent what I heard and also you would wish to see less accusations flying around towards who's responsible for what's going on and more um, looking at the situation from a humanitarian side rather than accusations and judgments. Okay, let's check with Shoshi. Any has that landing? Anything to clarify or to highlight for, that you want to say? Yeah, thank you. No, that was um, yeah, that was really good to hear. I'm just thinking there's something that is sort of still landing for me that I'm trying to figure out. Like, and I'm, I'm not sure if we completely like yeah, if I completely made it clear about the you say about the humanitarian side. I think when I think humanitarian I think more like yeah making sure that people have water and people have like medical supplies that is very important I'm not like erasing that but I actually I really wish there was more listening to what's really important to people and all this not not just the practical like humanitarian side of things but like yeah just space to really hear like why do you like yeah yeah example question would be like why do you care about this land so much why do you think it it should belong to your people um and to be willing to hear each other on that kind of thing um and that's what I think is for me is one of the things that's really lacking amidst all the accusations flying around as you said I don't know if that clarifies mm -hmm. so to hear to really hear each other uh, on, on those ways and just in general to be able to really try to hear each other so mm -hmm. anything else Rasha you want to yes can I share something um yeah when I do I'm want hearing, you to yeah I do want you I'm, to share something but and, and just yeah it, it show she feeling understood as well so yeah. just <laughs> are you wanting to comment in this moment or just or, or is it part of like how you want to reflect back what you're hearing um I think it's both. I'm not so sure 
because this subject is very intense. And as yeah. I do reflect about what Joshi is sharing and uh, the entire world comments about it and how I feel about it, I would like to share one thing maybe that will make the subject more close to the people who are related to it, the people who come from the same background or a different background. But I think where we are standing today when it comes to how we are feeling about the subject, especially for me as a Syrian and for Shoshi as a Jewish person, it's how we were brought up and what type of beliefs and values we inherited or we observed from our communities and backgrounds. So this is where I'm also challenged into seeing where Shoshi is coming from, but also balancing where I came from and how I approached the situation as I was growing up. So mm -hmm. from how you I, were raised. And yes, I everybody I'm, I'm connecting with Shoshi as a human being, regardless of our differences. And uh, I feel uh, sad that we are still having to deal with issues in, 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 in certain approach rather than a human beings approach. So mm -hmm. okay. Shoshi, do you feel willing to reflect that back just a little bit of sort of that back and forth? Um, do you feel up for that? Oh, and you're muted right now. Thank you. Yeah. Um, there's always got to be one. Hey, um, yeah, I, I'd, like, I'd like to check my understanding, I think, of what you said, Rasha. Is it that, like, you're saying it, it depends, like, on your upbringing as well? So, like, yeah, like, we can kind of connect together as, like, human to human. Um, mm -hmm. And, like, we can, we can mourn together, um, even though we're experiencing different things, maybe believe some different things. We can mm -hmm. still collect as humans. But it, was it maybe part of what you're saying that, like, not everybody's upbringing gives them like the the privilege to be able to do that yes i i wish that we can put our judgments aside and mm -hmm. uh i i am connecting with your fear and uh your longing for safety rather than how i think about the issue in total yeah sorry someone's just coming <laughs> yeah um yeah um yeah no, thank okay. you. Sorry, I wasn't sure if I was meant to reflect that back. Yeah. <laughs> no, I... Yeah. <laughs> and is there maybe just in in completing with with the two of you? Is there any? Do you feel do you feel understood the way you wanted, Shoshi? You were making some additional kind of things that you want uh, to be to be understood from your perspective. Do you feel like that got that got um, acknowledged and heard and and um, as well as 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 what you feel and want yeah i do thank you i actually feel a strong strong feeling of connection right now so yeah thank you for oh that. great okay mm -hmm. yeah. well thank you both so much and rasha for being willing to come back in and reflect back where probably as you've said su such big emotions for both of you and so many um you know anybody kind of um, touched by this uh, as most are right it's it's not easy to do this to, to speak and, and, and express certain things and then to to be able to reflect it back if it's different than your experience, right? Something so big. And I just so appreciate both of you for being willing to do a bit of this, just back and forth and getting to that place of, of some connection, like what, what we all care about as human beings and, and the beauty of listening to each other at these different levels. So thank you both so much. Thank you. All right. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, let me um spotlight and Asti, would you like to go next? It looks like I think hi hi Asti, nice to see you in this space. Um don't see any other hands, so yeah, would you like to go next? And can I put you with me in the break in the spotlight? Is that okay now that you're off camera or on camera? Sure. All right. Well, I wasn't planning to talk. Ah, okay. At all. I was just going to uh, observe. But Shashi said something that 
maybe raise my hand. Um, and the thing she said is actually let me just was, just let me just uh, uh, there's there is something often tender about referencing what someone else said and that there's a there's a place for some of that but i'd say the more you can just reference and then speak about your experience probably the better yes absolutely uh, yeah yeah okay so the thing she said is um i'm wondering if i'm missing something if my friends are not saying uh I assume what she would like to hear. Um, and when I heard those words, I remember going through that process myself of um, of wanting so much fairness and wanting so much um, hope for peace and for all life being um, held with care. Um, and so for, um, so for me, this has been a very long journey. I'm a child of Holocaust, children of Holocaust survivors. It's been a very long journey in which I held very many different positions <clears throat> for long periods of time with the clarity for myself that I really don't know what's going on and being willing to be in that unknown in various positions. Um, for me, holding that place of maybe I'm missing something <clears throat> was a way of looking for hope that maybe everybody can do a little more to bring this peace. But the events that happened in Israel this year um, really shifted my perception dramatically. I feel so I'm not going to go to the feeling. I'm just going to go with my thoughts. My thoughts are my first question that come up is why isn't every Arab standing up and saying Hezbollah um, Hamas doesn't represent us. We would not open women's stomachs, we would not rape, we would not kill children. Why doesn't every person say this does not represent us? Because to me, all of a sudden, it's not about territory. It's about something deeper. It's about human values. You know, it's not about we want a little piece more of the land or we want less or we want it here or we want it there. To me right now, it's not at all about territory. It's about how do we hold life? And I don't feel, my understanding is that Israel is not fighting for territory either. It's fighting for our right as a people to have a voice because my parents didn't. My family was sent into, into camps. My father's a, as a um, camp survivor. We didn't have a country. We didn't have anybody to speak up for us. And I think the 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 fight is more about that. It's like we're not going to be in that position again. Um, so when I hear people talking about peace and the two states, and I just feel like the real point is missing which is how we're holding life, what commitment are we making to life, uh, to each other's lives, to our lives, to life on this planet. And I would like, and I'm not sure what I'm feeling, maybe no hope, okay. I don't know. So maybe take, your, take your time it. with that. Yeah, well, so you said some of your thoughts about how you see it and these the needs that you just spoke to, what you want. Yeah, take a moment, just see if anything about how you feel, maybe numb, maybe there's a numbness, you don't, you know, but just kind of, what, what what are some maybe feelings there? For you? There's something inside of me that wants to scream, like, why are we talking about territory? Why are we talking about any victims? It's a tragedy, even one person anywhere is a tragedy. Why are we talking about all this? Like, why aren't people seeing that the issues here is the sanctity of human life and, and not... Not, not territory, not, you know, it, it just seems like people are not talking about what's really. Um, 
Um, yeah. yeah, to care for life, to care for each other. Yeah. 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 And, 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 and so how do you say it, the feeling, the feeling, any feel, sadness, deep sadness, deep grief, deep pain? It's like resignation of some sort. Resignation. Okay. Kind of like a hope, like you said, sort of a hopeless quality of resignation. Yeah. Yeah. Why are people looking in all these other places? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's so easy for us human beings to be diverted mm -hmm. from what's really important. Mm -hmm. okay. And yeah, it's fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe maybe a sense. I, I wouldn't call it hopelessness, but this is like resignation. That resignation. Who knows what we can believe next? Mm. You know, like the, like I, I would like to have a place to feel grounded, and for me, that's the regard for life. Mm. It's a commitment to that. Um, yeah. Okay. So there's. Probably more. Is that enough for this moment to kind of land on again, kind of what you most care about and want to see there in that way? Yeah, yeah. So something mm -hmm. happens to me when I keep hearing people talking about land and territory, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think, oh, it's not about that. That's why don't people mm -hmm. talk about what people need mm -hmm. on both sides? Mm -hmm. Okay. Feel complete for the moment. Yeah. yeah. Wondering yeah. how many people will see this video. <laughs> well, again, I just you and others, just the courage to to speak and and um be vulnerable in that way. So thank you so much. <clears throat> how about let's just take a moment of some silence with what with what you've shared. And I just, again, want to keep reminding folks that as you're listening to whoever's talking, just noticing what's coming up in you and thoughts, feelings, what you desire. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Esti. Um, what I think I'd like to do is <clears throat> see if there's, since we're getting... <clears throat> kind of in that that roughly half an hour left to see if someone might like to just, you know, base, mostly just reflect back what SD has said. Uh, I'll go look up at the gallery so I can see everybody, at least on this page. So um, is there someone that would like to, maybe that has a, you sense you have a different perspective than SD in some way, at least in terms of like on the, on the thought level or the perspective level level and you'd like to sort of practice so oh, can i can i actually reflect that back can i actually hear her even though you stay you know very connected to how you see things and you know where you are and then i'd like to start to open up just some sharing from other people about how this process has been for you today and 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 anything kind of like on that level but would someone like to kind of be the last person to to kind of reflect back and then you could be the first person to say how how this has been for you. But raise your hand if you'd like to be, if you'd like to reflect back what you heard from Esty. There's anybody that wants to do that. And if not, I can I can do it. But sometimes people, you know, they're often in a group this size. There's people who like to do that, like to be able to reflect back. <clears throat> okay. So how about, I'm gonna go back into the speaker view with you, SD. And, but I'll just say what I heard and then we'll kind of open it up and see whatever people wanna share more generally. Yeah. Yeah, so 
<clears throat> I um in terms of your some of the things that you've observed um about land talking about land and um um there's another thing too but it was like that on that level of of kind of like who's more maybe more justified or not based on land based on um other things how like that how many people were killed how many people counting were killed bodies, yeah. counting and sort of the attention on all of those kind of things you just have this sort of thought like why why are we focusing on that it doesn't it's that's not in your mind like that's that's not the most the thing to most focus on that's going to be most important and the the feeling of of that resignation of sounds like just there's fear there's sadness to there's just a kind of confusion even so i don't know if you i don't think you said those words but are those re resonating those emotions somewhat Um, I, I don't think I have confusion anymore. I think this incident, can, can I say something? Yeah. So I lived in Israel for a while and, you know, I hung out with Messianics and Christians and Palestinians and everybody. And and uh, I thought this was wonderful. It was a place to learn about different um different histories, different ways of holding life. And people would say to me, Jewish people like, oh, but you can't trust them because they really hate us. And that felt very painful for me, you know, that I couldn't trust my own experience. And I think I felt that pain again with Shoshu was saying that they drive around saying, we'll rape the Jews, we'll kill them. And, and I'm thinking, why don't they rape, drive around and say, we would never do this, we don't stand for this. I feel like every citizen should reinforce peace, not just the, mm. you know, the governments, not the territories, or not the political talks, not the counting of bodies, but every single human being should say, I'm here for peace. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you're in England. Why should you be afraid in England? Like, mm -hmm. you would never do this. You know, this is some people do this, but it doesn't represent us as a whole. So the question that came up for me is it that really represents every Arab? Like, it's terrible. And then I know it doesn't. Mm. But when I turn on the, when I hear things like this, mm -hmm. and I think that makes me feel, that's where the feeling of hopelessness comes from. Yeah. Yeah, and pain. I just hear there's pain, pain there and the hopelessness. Because, and connecting that to what you want and need, I hear this this image of like people standing saying wait a minute let's let's care for each other let's make sure we're supporting yeah. peace with each other let's you know really going around shouting that and um and right. you talked about the sacredness of life like really focusing on all life involved everybody's life and how precious and sacred and <clears throat> caring for for the life that if if it's being lost or how to protect it and how to care for each other so like really wanting that to be, and just almost, I like can't believe like, why are we not just all so much just whether not just government, but any people could just keep like shouting bringing that out. Focus to that. Yes. Bringing the focus to that, bringing the focus yeah. to that. Yeah. Yeah. So you feeling um, heard enough for, for this moment, anything else you want to clarify? No, I just thought this was my vision since it was a child. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that, like she said, it's 2023, you know, like, I hope we keep learning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for speaking. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to take, remove our spotlights. <clears throat> and... Go to the gallery view if you're not on gallery, if you'd like to be. And <clears throat> so now is a, 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 a chime for a little bit. I don't, um, um, Goni, I don't know how much time you want at the end, but you just kind of let let me know, let us know. But now now's a time more of just hearing from other voices. So if you've been, you know, just listening and 
how it's been for you to witness this, um, you know, much, maybe much briefer, like if there's something you want to be able to say, and, and again, it continues to be a chance to, if and whoever speaks, if they say something that's different than you see it, and maybe you notice that it's like, it's a tr kind of a trigger or it's something coming up in you, it's a, to continue to practice. Yeah. Seeing if you can understand, even if you don't agree, staying connected to, to your truth and how you feel and what matters, you know, to you and kind of maybe to, to all of us here, what we deeply, deeply care about as human beings. So um, but I'd like to open it up a bit to, if you haven't spoken and you'd like to share, how was this for you to, to um, witness and be present to what, what was shared and the, and the, the reflecting back, the understanding and the whole process. And um, maybe Este, let's put your hand down so that isn't confusing. Maybe let's just let that. Okay. So yeah, put your hand up if you'd like to share a little. Um, how this, what, what you're, what you've take, what you're taking away from this, what you've learned. Um, Steve. Yes, I was really touched by the depth of listening. And the empathy that was given back and forth, and I'm realizing that people in, in both uh, situations are in tremendous pain from so many unmet needs, and are, one of the needs is for empathy from the other. And I just really enjoyed um, hearing, I don't know that anyone was intentionally giving empathy, but just the hearing and the deep listening had an empathic quality to to it that I found very uplifting and hopeful. Thank you all for, for that. Thank you, Steve. Anybody else? Yeah, Jennifer. Um, I was really uh, struck by the need for human connection that I could see from all the people who were sharing. And um, that was something that I have also been feeling a lacking in um, what's happening in the world right now, um, all over the place, is this need for connection and um, connection with ourselves first and then connection with our neighbors and especially with our neighbors that have different ideas about how the world should be run and um, how things should operate. And um, so that's what I wanted to share. I was also very touched by this practice and um, thanks. Mm. Thank you, Jennifer. Pam. Hi, Pam. I believe I know you, Pam. Hi, good to see you. Yes. Quite a few years ago, like maybe six or seven years ago, one of my early mediations, I, I actually asked you for a for a, an individual coaching and you it was a really it was a really successful mediation, I think, that uh, your coaching was a huge part of that. So you might remember me from that. Um, I think so. What I'm so first of all, I'm noticing I'm really touched and very tender, um, and I'm thinking about things like the things that are that I'm noticing and questioning. Noticing that you are right in there, making sure that people are attending to the questions when they're speaking, and attending to when they're reflecting that they're really that you're really trying to make sure that they're reflecting to the best of their ability and letting the other person have um, an opportunity to say, to clarify, which is, which is kind of, you know, really normal for NBC, but there's also a way in which this is reminding me of a restorative circle where a lot of times the facilitator is not as active and I'm just wondering if you have any thoughts or insights about 
the difference. This obviously you could do with a great big group, whereas a circle often takes a very small group. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> yeah, maybe I'll say a few words about how I see my role. Is One is I try to restrain my, or I've learned to restrain myself a bit about me doing a lot of reflecting back of, of right? Because uh, I want it to be more about what e each person is, you know, or how the second person is is reflecting back but I do try to really use the questions and help sort of track what's what's being spoken and what's being reflected back and trying to kind of prompt and help and really, yeah, kind of keep doing those reminders about understanding, not having to agree and um, yes, kind of guiding, guiding through the process, but trying not to do a lot of, I do some reflecting here and there, but um that's that was one of the harder things to is is not to kind of overdo it on my side because I'm so I, I do it so much to just do a lot of the reflecting myself but let other people do it. So those are some of the things I've I've learned or try to try to do as I'm in my in this particular role, if that's helpful. Well, I want to just ask one more quick point since there's only one other hand right now, and that is what if everybody was what if we didn't have a whole bunch of people who are in, interested in NBC and who's who, one of their biggest values is that everybody everybody's needs matter. I mean, that's what we have here. So I wonder mm. if that made it way easier. It does. It does make it easier. And that's generally who shows up to me offering this uh, through the time that I have. Um, if at the times that do people do show up that don't have as much or maybe any NVC experience, then I'm a little more active that way. Like I'm interrupting a little more i'm 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 supporting people say to stay with empathy and not just self express if they're mm. if i'm asking them and helping them maybe i'm guiding them a little more to just can you just focus on the feelings right now what feelings did you hear what are they wanting like simplifying it down for people and but being a lot even more active more jumping in more guiding if people are not as used to doing this thank you so um and 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 at times maybe a little emergency empathy if someone's getting triggered and needing to kind of get that before they can go back to reflecting. So those are things I do a bit more of maybe if if someone is less experienced with with the NBC. Yeah, thanks, Pam. Let's hear from Malki. Am I saying your name right? Yeah, that's great. Thanks. Oh, um. Yeah, this is meeting me in a really, really raw place. I feel quite, quite broken open by by just being here. Um, yeah, I find sometimes actually being in places of connection is more painful than being in places of conflict because when I finally feel and see connection and empathy and listening happening it touches those places of realizing how often that doesn't happen um i'm in the moment uh i'm actually living in israel palestine so this is a lot of what's been touched upon tonight is is my life is happening all around um i so i feel really raw and tender um, my stomach's in knots. There's a lot of appreciation. There's a lot of mourning. Um, I feel really uh, profoundly moved by the not shying away from the hard conversations. I wish we trusted ourselves and the people around us more to try and have them and trust that we would be okay having them. Um, yeah, I'm grateful for your questions as well, Pam, at the end. And I wish that, what do I wish? I really wish there were angels of mediation and angels of support and empathy and slowing down to support people staying in what they're feeling, to support people into listening I was really noticing that in the listening, it was sometimes easier for people to remember and catch onto the facts. And it was sometimes harder for people to remember the feelings that people had described and how you were 
inviting and encouraging and reminding to go back to the feelings. Um, I was moved by the courage in front of 80 plus people on a platform where we might all be together, but we're all kind of separate. And that is recorded for people to really speak to something that is a burning thing for a lot of us with a lot of frequency, feelings, emotions. Um, yeah, I think that's enough for now. Thank you. Thank you for the work uh, you do. Yeah, you're welcome. And thank you for speaking to what you just did and speaking from the rawness, mm -hmm. that real tender, yeah. raw place. And you're 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 right there in the middle of of it. And um mm -hmm. so thank you for being willing to speak from that yeah. from that place. And I also just you reminded me to acknowledge um, especially for those that are living there or just directly more directly impacted and but however you know much closeness or distance that this is a traumatic event yeah and and there's trauma all over the place that's that's getting created and getting triggered from the past as well as the present and just the courage for everybody to just be here and be in this conversation yeah. and be willing to slow as you said yeah. Maki slowing down and trying to hear and feeling into very difficult feelings and then connecting to the places where we can connect and feel that beauty of the connection and yet the pain, right? As you said, of how often it's not happening and how just torturous to be like with, it's not this place of being connected as we know we can be. So I just... Yeah. um really thank you for what you said and for everybody just um showing up to to speak can i say can i yeah, say one please. last thing to that sure. i just want to offer i want to name and offer my thanks there are many people who showed up tonight and i'm curious and wondering and a little worried that for some people may have other things that were on their heart or their mind to speak about and maybe the conflict is slightly further removed from them and they may be mourning or wishing that there was something else that was spoken about so i just want to mm. say thank you for for those who are able to witness and hold space for it to happen yeah mm. i will definitely go to sleep a little a little more hopeful and peaceful tonight so thank you mm. Mm. yeah yeah thanks for saying that and also too if this is this stirred up um, well, I imagine it it did different things, different emotions. And and to just um remind you, maybe invite you, remind you to think of who to reach out to if if you uh you know have support, you have community people that know how to listen empathically, and to be able to just say, Hey, you know, I was on this call, lots coming up for me. Can you can you just listen to me for a while? Or can we can we talk about what's there? And but really inviting that listening to you to to, if you didn't get, especially if you didn't get to speak today and you're holding a lot um, about this topic or maybe other things that you came for too, as you said, Maki. So just to invite you to, you know, ask for that, that, that empathy and support and care from others in, in your, in your kind of, if you have um, one or more people like that to turn to and to notice if you might need that. Yeah. Just to kind of give yourself that like, oh yeah, I could, I could use that right now. And a lot coming up. Oh, thank thank you. you all so much. Um, this was to me very beautiful um, to witness people doing this process, everybody. So thank you. Thank you. How about Goni, turn it back over to you. Anything else you want to say here at the end? Hmm. First of all, I would like to thank you, John, for holding this process and introducing the process. And hmm for being here <laughs> with your, also with your tenderness um, and with the lots of experience that you bring. Um, so this is what is, I think mostly alive in me for now, the sense of gratitude to you and for um, the idea of offering this space for all of us. Um, 
Yeah. And um, I wonder, maybe I wonder, Shachar, if you would like to say something before we close. Uh, I can remind people that we will be staying here after we say goodbye uh, to John. If you would like to hear more about the learning community, which is the 10-month program that we are going to open in about six weeks from now. Um, yeah. Shacha, would you like to, to add anything before we close? No, just thank you, John. And, and I resonate with how blessed we are to have the people that showed up here being so so empathic and, and understanding and, and still at the same time expressing what's important for them. So this could be a great example for a whole new world. Thank you, John. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I do think that this, to me, I see this as a, a way forward because you don't have to start off agreeing on anything. In fact, it's part of the process. We're going to probably not agree. And all we need to do is try to stretch into understanding where we don't agree, even when that's really hard. It's possible, hard but possible. And then we can go to what we all feel and we want and need. And then we can move into what we might agree on. How do we move forward in agreement from that place? And I think that's much more possible than trying to get to some agreement at the beginning, because as we know, that often doesn't, doesn't happen. So I uh, just, uh, um, thanks for being part of this and which gives me hope that there's a way, a way through these things together. And if you, I'm, I'm going to be, I've been doing this process. I said on Wednesday evenings, <clears throat> in the Pacific time, California time, it's starting in November. I'm going to move it, this doing this across the aisle process to Friday, early afternoon Pacific time. So I don't know where that will be for you in the world, but um, it'll be at a different time starting uh, beginning of November on every other Friday. So on some Fridays, I will do this process. On other Fridays, I'll do reconciliation, healing conversations, kind of more personal and interpersonal work with the with the the approach that I use that depending on the kind of conflict, different maps to navigate. But um, every other week will be this across the aisle process. So, and maybe Goni, we can talk about and say, hey, maybe I could do this again for, for NBC Rising, perhaps, um, especially as, as, you know, so much is happening to be, try to hold a space, a space for. So maybe yeah. we can talk about that. So Thank back, you back to you. Us. Yes. Thank you. I would love that. And I also just love how things just get, you know, developing <laughs> um, from the collaboration and from being together and from co-creating these spaces. So thank you for offering this. Um, okay. I think we will uh, close, John. <laughs> mm, yes, yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, I, 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 when yeah. I have read a um, sentence I read recently, which really touched me, it was saying, Peace is not about not having conflict. Peace is the ability to stay connected during conflict. Yes. And I really like it. Yes. Yes. Thank you for that. I love that. Thank you, Shahan. So thank you once again, John, and for those of you who would like to stay for a few more moments to hear about uh, our upcoming program. Um, uh, I'm here, Shachar is here, and also uh, just to remind you that we do have a few more uh, like free community events in the next few weeks. I think, Shachar, maybe you can put again the link to the next um, free community events in the chat. I'll also put yeah. my, yeah. where you can see where I'm doing this, uh, mm. if people want to do more of this process with, with me, mm. but um, yeah. And in your NBC rising events. Yeah. I, as well. I think it's not clickable, John, for some reason, or uh, I don't know, okay. but yeah, <laughs> I'm sure people will also reach you. Um, okay. So thank you so much. And we are, now opening, uh, we're completing, we're closing the session and we are, uh, maybe, maybe we'll take a little breath and then we will 
open the space for people to ask if they would like to ask something about the learning community and we can give some more information about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, and another reminder is that John is going to be part of the learning community program. So he's gonna teach two sessions. Mm -hmm. 